Hello and welcome to Sound Like, where today we're going to be having a look at the most recent song to be released for Muse, Will of the People. So this video might be a lot different from my usual Sound Like videos in that it might be a bit quick. There's not very much sonically going on from this song, so we might just fly through and might be leading more towards the kind of open to interpretation aspects of the song. The guitar I'm going to be using in this video is my Manson MA Evo with XY pad, as that is the best guitar that I think I have to deal with huge riffs as this song has. Before we get into it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and hit the bell to not miss out on any of my content. And with all that done, let's dive right in. So the song opens up with the layered vocal of Will of the People. At this point it's just the vocal, there's nothing else going on really with the song at this kind of initial part of the song. Because there's very little guitar really kind of throughout the song, there is definitely guitar in there, I just want to start playing as soon as I can so I just do an octave on A at that same point, kind of matching the rhythm of the vocal, just to add some kind of extra dynamics in there. So straight away we are already hitting the kind of open to interpretation aspect of the song. The pedal I'm using for this part of the song is actually my MXR Timmy Overdrive with the gain turned up to about three o'clock, so there's a lot of kind of drive in there to really kind of match the aggressive tone and just kind of fly right out the gate kind of feel of the song. And it sounds like this. <laughs> It's very, very easy and simplistic. It's just a bounce on that octave. That's something that you kind of see in a lot of other Muse songs. So this isn't really anything new at all. Like I said, it's open to interpretation. I want to kind of play guitar straight away because what comes next isn't that exciting. So moving on from that bounce on the A octave over to the next kind of section, if you will. So the pedals I'm using for this are coming away from the Timmy Overdrive and deploying my Prime Distortion on one side and on the other, my Big Muff, which is a kind of like classic for me, in terms of the gear that I have, a classic Muse type riff sound that I have. That's not the most aggressive I have, but there's quite a lot of bite in there. Some nice crispy high ends from the Prime Distortion and the low grunt from the Big Muff. Put them together and you got, in theory, a nice sound. So what comes with this is just a load of chucking on the guitar, muting all the strings, having that rhythm kind of play along with the rhythm of the song and then just bringing in the riff as and when needed. The sound that I'm going for at this point with just those two pedals is kind of the ideal choice really I would guess. You could bring in a whammy pedal with a harmony octave down to really emphasize that low grit if you want to. Especially if you have a mono board and you want to you know, really want to bring that sound out straight away, great you'll have a really good sound but then that's quite an extreme sound and kind of my most brutal sound that I have and bringing that in at this point in the song kind of leaves you with nothing else to play at that point. Now this brings in my next argument which kind of probably demands a video in and of itself. This song is actually quite sonically boring. So with all that in mind, this is what it sounds like with the sound that I've described and then let's move on. So now we're moving on over to the pre-chorus of the song. We've gone from the previous riff over to a different one. Now doing that kind of lean towards the E. Because of the shift in the tone, really we should be looking for a new sound to bring in. The song itself is actually quite extreme, so you want a big strong sound in there. And I'm using a fairly strong kind of sound that I've had previously up to this point. Now for this part, I'm not changing that sound without bringing in the whammy trick that I do which really should come later so in my head this kind of really is scrambling with my brain of how I like to do music production new section new sound to really keep things fresh you can keep the same sound as before low grunt from the big muff and a kind of nice high transients from the prime distortion as I've used if you have a mono board pick something that kind of works for you in between that's got a lot of grit but then will really punch out. I know that not everyone has stereo boards as I've tried to kind of say in my previous videos but keeping all that in mind it kind of still bugs me at least at this point that the song isn't going anywhere else but in the cover that I have this is kind of where things are at. Personally because I do like to have a new sound for a new section anything that I can try to really bring out the tone I like to try and do but without compromising on the kind of strength of the guitar 
that's that works well with that particular feel for the song. A trick that I like to use for a lot of like riff based muse stuff is to roll all of the tone off of the guitar so really, you're really cutting out all those kind of high ends so you're left with a lot more of a boxy mid tone. So maybe this is something that I like to try and deploy in future with this song um, because the song relatively recently came out I'm still kind of experimenting with tones that I've got so the cover that I've put out may not be the definitive version I have but that's what f came to mind first and what I want to show you guys so maybe it will make you think about maybe I should use that tone part that I never ever touch on my guitar so keeping that in mind let's check it out If at this point you have done all that and you're keeping the same tones but the riff just isn't punching quite through, by all means you can add in that whammy pedal if you have it at your disposal. And with that included in my rig, this is what you'll find. So now we've come on to the section of the song where really in my mind I feel most comfortable with bringing in the whammy for that big riff song. It works really really well for a lot of previous Muse songs, especially with they just want to jam out with riffs or songs that appear in, in normally in the album. The kind of low harmony octave works so well to really bring out the strength of a riff and if that guitar riff is being played alongside the bass, just the overall strength of the song really comes out to have both instruments play the same thing on a higher or lower octave from each other. Other. it just really is a classic way to kind of get a great strong feel for a song so really if you ask me at this point due to the composition of the song and how you want to produce your guitar tone for it this is the highlight of the song at this point which is a bit of a shame because the riff has been played at this point but in a slightly different way so maybe the impact is lost ever so slightly but what's going on here pedal wise is I've removed my prime distortion and replaced it with my boss OS2 with the overdrive distortion blend me leaning much more towards the distortion side of things it's a very strong song with a very kind of slick type sound and overdrive might not work so brilliantly well at this point in the song the big muff is still in there and now the whammy is brought in. At this point things are a bit interesting because the whammy is actually only present on one side of the channel. It's actually working on the big muff which leaves the Boss OS 2 just dry on its own. It's a way to kind of break up that sound having your kind of low gritty pedal have even more grit and so that you can kind of pick out the finer details of the Boss OS 2. That's how I like to do my sound but what you could say, you could have that approach for the earlier parts, have the whammy only on one side, and when you have this big chorus sound, have it straight down the middle, which is really useful for people with mono boards, just have, just wait off on the bringing the whammy in for the chorus so that that huge strong sound really does finally kick in. Completely lip to you, like I said, this song is really quite open to interpretation because it's quite sonically flat. Uh, it doesn't have much great dynamic range if you ask me to really go crazy with it This is how I would just suggest to go for it The reason why I've pulled out the prime distortion at this point is just to kind of try and shift the kind of feel of the song the sound of it the kind of frequency content that the prime distortion brings is so different to the OS 2 that I've got so It's just asking yourself how what can I do with such a small range of sounds to play against with the song what can I do with that and this is my answer with all that in mind this is what that sounds like What I also have done in my recent cover of this song, in the chorus particularly, is actually bring in a, albeit virtual, wah pedal. The wah pedal is actually blended along with the uh, sound that I'm getting from my board, so you're hearing quite an even amount of it. It's taking a lean more from a Royal Blood or Queens of the Stone Age type sound, but because it's quite riff based and single notes at a time on the guitar, it would never work with chord type uh, guitar parts, it really only works with individual picked notes. Completely up to you, I think it's worthwhile investigating and this is what that sounds like. <laughs> So the 
last part of the song that we're going to be looking at now is actually the final chorus. Structurally, in terms of pedals and so on, it's exactly the same as we've used before. In the previous choruses, the guitar playing has been quite staggered, which has been quite good to kind of have a kind of pulsating, punchy aspect to it, but it has felt quite kind of tight and compact. In the third chorus, at least to my ear, the song kind of guitar playing wise opens up a little bit it's a bit more kind of rhythmic a lot more strummed not um not picked so hard it's a slight difference so all it needs it really is just a different slightly different way of playing it remember the pedals are exactly the same so keeping that in mind this is what the third chorus sounds like <laughs> That is all how I'm hearing it. It's completely up to you if you want to do that. But because the song offers very little in terms of diversity and nuance and so on, anything that I can latch onto to make the song as interesting as possible to play at least, I will do. Um, granted, this isn't much to do that to kind of make it more interesting, but it's a slightly different way of doing it. And if you want to compare the song to previous Muse songs, um, it can lend itself to Uprising in that same way again. The final chorus is a lot more open and vibrant than the previous one, which is quite interesting because the song has been kind of compared thematically to Uprisings, and it's nice to see that production-wise, it's kind of the same too. Not major, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to, it's just a little suggestion from me. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm leaning a lot towards open to interpretation aspects of this song, because there's not really that much going on. But with all that done, that's the end of the song and the end of the video. So there we go, that is Sound Like Will of the People in its entirety. As I said at the beginning and during the video, there's a lot to kind of be open to interpretation here. So as time goes on for me, this song sonically will have a bit more nuance to it and change and develop. So if there's anything dramatic that really changes, maybe I'll let you guys know. It did happen for me for Compliance and Won't Stand Down. Since I made the covers I've done, I have upgraded or changed up or improved the sound I've I, I used and achieved for that and also the kind of the way that I'm playing those songs as well. It's really changed as that's kind of gone on. They're relatively minor changes but I really enjoy them so again this song for me may change up. I may find new sounds that work really well for it but heavily leaning more towards open to interpretation. So thank you for watching and please do let me know what you thought about this video down in the comments below and maybe tell me what you think about Will of the People as a song in general. I'm interested to know this song is a bit divisive as it's recently come out and some people like it some people don't. I think I might do a review of the song to get my thoughts across both from a song and a compositional and a technical standpoint but wait until that comes out but yeah let me know what you think about it down in the comments below and while you're there maybe give me other suggestions of sound like videos that you'd like to see from me but until next time i've been harry and thanks for watching